Lalita Padmini Ragini, popularly known as the Travancore Sisters, left an indelible mark on cinema and classical dance as we know today. They represented the transition of classical Bharatanatyam from the proscenium stage to the silver screen. And this began in the 1940s, and we can still see the prevalence of their influence even today. They performed and danced throughout India and acted in various languages, all the way from Hindi to Kannada to Telugu to Malayalam to Tamil. All three of them were stars in their own right. And all three of them were very close to my entire family, and they were more like family than friends. The film is Kanniga, the year is 1947, choreographed by Guru Sri Varur Ramya Pillai. This is the first time that we see both Lalita Ma and Padmini Ma dancing together on the silver screen. The scene depicts the dance of Mohini and Shiva. But that's not what makes this unusual. What I sort of, uh, what I observed with this was the influence of the Priscinium Margam, how the music is handled, is so reflective of what was done on stage, was still being re represented within cinema. So it's this early stage of the transition of Bharatanatyam to the silver screen. You have this wonderful little piece of alapana that was played by the flute with the introduction of the previous scene before the dancing. And it is the Lasya and Tandava aspects of both Mohini and Shiva that are so well depicted by both Lalitama and Padmaniyama.
Papima, as we fondly referred to Padmanima, was a woman who was though a, a, a star on such a national and international level, she was such a down-to-earth person. And my mother, when she would speak about their family, which she often did, would always mention about how down-to-earth and just very humble people they were. Now we jump to the year 1955, the movie Shiv Bhakta. And in this clip, it needs to be mentioned that the music is just astounding because it's Lata Mangeshkar and the, uh, quite a surprise to me, uh, Ustad Alaraka playing the tabla. But the dance sequence here is very reflective of the need of the, the dance to still stick to the margam because she's dancing a tillana in this piece, a very short, quick, brisk tillana, Padmanima. And um, you, you begin to understand that in certain pockets, the influence of both Katak and a certain North Indian lilt and gait that is given to the dance to make it more palpable to a more North Indian audience. That I found very interesting in this clip. You will also notice that the musicians at the back are actually South Indian musicians. So you have your Murdangam, you have your Nattunar, you have your vocalists. But of course, on recording, what you hear is the use of the tabla and the use of Lata Mangeshkar Ma's voice. One thing to note in this video that I really took me aback, as it always does with Papiya Ma's dancing, Padmiriya Ma's dancing, is that with the speed and precision of her adavus are so clear and vivid as we watch this clip. Dim, 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 dim,
Let's start with Ragini Amma because she was actually the closest to my mother and I think because probably in age they were the closest and my mother was more like a confidant to Ragini Amma. As an anecdote, as a kind of funny anecdote to sort of represent how close they were as friends. I believe um, Ragini Amma was an ardent devotee of Karmari Amman in Tirverkade in Chennai. And from their home in Nungambakam, she would always, on a whim, decide to walk to Tirverkade. So she would walk all the way from Nungambakam, and of course, Balama's house was on the way in Kilpok, and she would all of a sudden show up at 2 o'clock at night and knock on the door and give everyone a startle at home and um, sort of say, Lakshmi, Nanda Vandirke, Lakshmi, it's me. And she would come at 2 o'clock in the morning, they would talk for a bit, and then she would say, okay, I'm on my way to the temple, and that was it. The complete, uh, no barriers, no, no, uh, no falsity, no, no, no facade was kept up to maintain their stardom, particularly with people that they knew. Kinare, kinare. In this film, this dance sequence is performed by Ragini Amma, though unfortunately her name is not mentioned in the beginning credits of the film, but is an, a unique example of how the traditional format and traditional use of Aravus is completely transformed and transfixed within the cinematic milieu. You will see that the choreography is so evident by Guru T.K. Mahalingam sir, where the use of Aravus do not shift into a more cinematic role. You will see the use of Diditei, Tattei Taha, Teihattehi that are so typical of Aravus that you see on stage. And that really took me aback as an observation. It was something very refreshing to see.
Padmini Amma was close to all of us in the family. I still remember the time that she took, up, took my mother and I to see Sivaji Ganeshan sir and to see the chemistry that both of them had off screen was uh, uh, a completely uh, electric experience in its own way. The most memorable um, time that I've had with Papi Amma was when, right before she passed away, she had come back from the, from the US, she wasn't feeling well, and um, she was staying in her flat in Arwalpet, in, um, right, uh, right, uh, right across St. Mary's uh, Hotel. And um, I don't know why, but I had this sudden urge to go and see her. It was about two weeks before her passing. I went without any notice, knocked on her door, and her, um, her manager, the, the, wo the woman who was taking care of her, answered the door and I said, I'm Maniruddha and um, she said, well, we're not taking visitors right now. Amma's not well. She's not, she won't be able to see you. And I said, okay. And as I was walking away, I heard this voice come from the room. Yarade, Anuwa. You know, she didn't call me Ani. She called me Anu. Anuwa. Va, 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 va. So she made me sit. I had coffee with her. I danced for her. And it was such a memorable experience because it was something that was not expected for me. But to see her before she passed, it was like my entire ancestors had gone to see her before her passing on this earth to welcome her onto the other side. The song, Aadu Maragi Aragi, the film Raja Rajan in the year 1957. Here you will see both Lalita Ma and Padmini Ma doing their typical dance sequence, performing this particular duet. But as one will always observe and understand with the way that they dance, that there's a perfect synchronization between both dancers, where one reflects the other perfectly. Another thing that I, that I noted was the use of hasta mudra, particularly during the Abhinaya sequences when they're dancing, is that it still goes back to the Bharatanatya milu of using mudra and not just Abhinaya of the face, which you actually see later on in the transition with movies more in the 1960s.
The song, Adam Arul Jyoti, the film, Meendam Sorgam, and the year is 1960. Choreography for this dance segment is by P.S. Gopalakrishnan sir. In this clip, you'll really notice the picturesque postures and fluid movements in contrast to the more typical Bharatanatyam technique that is used in the dance by Padmaniyama. And these movements, these postures are so typical of Badmariyama's dancing. And another thing that I really appreciated and loved in this segment actually was the close-up shots of her Abhinaya and just her bright beauty. Just lovely.
Sanam, Sadin Ginatum, Sadin Ginatum, Sadin Ginatum, Sir Natale, Bavamra, Gantalam, Sir Natale, Ma 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 